and welcome back to episode number 15 of this tutorial series on Raspberry Pi for complete beginners. You can find the series playlist link in the description. And let's get started. In this tutorial, we are going to control the LEDs on the Raspberry Pi circuit from a web application using Flask and Python. And once again, like I did previously in this series, I'm going to show you the problem we want to solve as a challenge, and then I'm going to write the solution with you step by step. So in this application, you are going to uh, create a basic uh, Flask app like this one, initialize GPIOs, and you are going to add a new route here. So I'm going to just show you the URL you should have. So app.route with, so you will have slash LED slash, and then I'm going to write that int LED pin slash state slash int LED state. Okay, so what is that URL? So you can see we have uh, the LED world that will not change and the state world that will not change. And here, this is so you can give a number. Okay, you will give the pin of the LED inside the URL. So for example, you will give 17 here or 27, etc. And here you will give the state. So basically zero for GPIO low and one for GPIO high. So if you want to power on or power off the LED. So this URL makes you choose one LED pin and the state to put on the LED. And this is the syntax. Okay, uh, this is basically the syntax so you can get a number and read the number inside the function. So now the function will be, let's name it trigger LED and you will have two parameters, LED pin and LED state. Okay, so that are the two parameters that you get from the URL. Okay, so with that, I will leave you write the function and you can of course have here LED pin list which will contain 17, 27 and 22 which are the three GPIOs we are using as for now in this course. So your challenge is so first you are going to initialize of course the LED pins so set them up to GPIO out, initialize their state to uh, GPIO low okay and then here you are going to check you so you will need to validate okay the LED pin you don't want to just do a GPIO output on any LED that the user gives you. You want to validate that the GPIO is in fact in this array. Okay, and then validate the state if it is zero or one, so you can power on or power off the LED. All right, and now you can press pause on the video, try to do the challenge by yourself, and then watch the solution. So first of all, of course, we need to do the setup. So I'm going here, I have initialized the button pin. What I'm going to do is do for pin in LED pin list. So I'm going through the array of LEDs, okay? And simply do gpio.setup pin. So this is the, this will be the pin uh, we get. So first 17, then 27, and then 22 with gpio.out. And then I'm going to also uh, here, so this is initialization. I'm going to do for pin in LED pin list again, okay? And this time do GPIO dot output pin GPIO low. So we power off all of the LEDs. Note that I could have put that also in this for loop. This would have been the same, just put the output after the setup. But here, it's, I think it's a good practice to differentiate the different stage of the initialization. So first you just initialize the mode of the pin and then you initialize the state of the pin in a different uh, line, okay? So the LEDs are now set up. What we can do is go here in our function. And I am first going to check that the LED pin is correctly inside the array. So I'm going to do if not LED pin in pin 
uh, what's the name again? LED pin list. So if the LED is not in that list, we are just going to return wrong GPIO number. Okay, and maybe plus str LED pin. So str because this is an integer now. So if we just concatenate a string with integer, this will not work. So that is the first check. We check if the LED is correct. So now you can only give 17, 27, and 22. Any other number will not work. And now we can handle the state. So we know the LED pin is correct. We can do if LED state is equal with two equal sign. Okay, don't forget that. Zero. We can do GPIO.output with the LED pin variable and GPIO.low. Then we can do L if LED state is one, again with two equal sign. Then we do GPIO.output LED pin GPIO.high. And we can add an else. Okay, if the LED state is not zero and it's not one, we are going to that else and simply we return state must be zero or one. So in that case, we have a correct uh, GPIO number, but the state is not correct. And just one more thing we need to do is because when we have LED state zero or LED state one, we could just return something like return. Okay, something like that. And you will have to also use return. Okay, in that situation. So what we can do instead of writing return okay twice is just go here and do return okay so let's see what happens in that function here so first we check if the led pin is in the list okay if it's not in the list we just return a string from there if it's in the list we continue we go to line 30 we check if the state is zero if yes then we execute this line and then it will exit from the if and go to line 36 and return OK. Right. Now let's say it is false. Then we go to line 32. If the LED state is 1, we execute that line and then go out of the if and execute line 36, return OK. And finally, if this condition is false and this condition is false, we go to line 34. We go to the else and we return another string so now let's uh, actually i'm going to save as activity 11 and let's run activity 11 right let's go to here so we still have of course the push button but now i'm going to do led slash let's do 17 slash 8 and slash one and let's see what happens great you can see the led so the first led is powered on and we have the okay and when i put zero here well the led is powered off now let's say i put two as you can see we have the error state must be zero or one okay the important is that you don't get an error here like 404 or you don't get an internal error in your server you have to kind of handle every possibility and give the user a correct message of what you expect him or her to do so now if i go back to zero okay if i try another led let's say but 18 which should not be a correct number and you have the message wrong GPIO number 18. Okay. So if I want to power on the second LED, this is number 27, state 1. Let's call that. And okay, and you can see the second LED is powered on. Now if you want to power on the third one, you can just do 22. Okay. And then you can power off all of the LEDs, so let's power off LED 22 and then let's power off LED 27 
Okay, and all of the LEDs are now powered off. Hey, this is Edward. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial series a lot and that you could get some real value out of it. Now, this series is actually a free extract from my much larger course named Raspberry Pi for Beginners. This complete course contains 10 hours of content and will take you from a complete beginner to a Raspberry Pi maker with a strong intermediate level where you become really autonomous and confident to start any Raspberry Pi project you want. So if you like the way I teach and if you want to go further with Raspberry Pi, well, I recommend that you check the course out. The link is in the description. And just in case you are wondering what you're gonna learn, well, here is a sneak peek of what's inside the course. So here I am inside the course and you can see we have actually 15 different sections or 15 modules. And here is basically how the course is built. So we start with the foundation. So how to install Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi basics, Python 3 programming, okay, how to use the GPIOs. And then we build on top of this foundation, we build many different skill sets with different components or different functionalities. For example, we're gonna learn how to use a PIR sensor to detect a human presence, how to use the terminal on the Raspberry Pi, how to send an email from the Raspberry Pi, how to use the camera to take some pictures and videos, and also how to use a web server, which is actually what we did in this tutorial series. And at the end, we're gonna build on top of all of that, a big final project where we combine everything that we have learned in the course. And so you can see here on the left, I have the complete outline. So here is the installation section that you had in this tutorial series. And then we have, well, two sections on Python programming, okay, with a complete recap of Python using the Raspberry Pi and a few more activities and challenges. Then we see how to build the circuit, which is also something we did in the series, how to control the GPIOs, we practice more with the GPIO, so you will find more activities actually here than in the series. And then here, the real fun begins, okay? We're gonna learn how to use a PIR sensor, so I'm gonna show you how to tune the sensor, how to add it to the circuit to read the data, another activity to practice, and then how to use the terminal, also how to use Python in the terminal, which is very useful in the Raspberry Pi. And after that, we're gonna see how to send an email with Python from the Raspberry Pi, how to use the camera module. Okay, and you can see that in every section, we have a new activity so you can practice even more. Then we have this web application, okay, with Flask, which is what we did, but also with an additional activity. So we have 11 activities or 11 challenges in this course. And well, that's not all because you have this big final project. As you can see, I will show you the overview of what we're going to do. So in this project, we're going to create a alarm system using the PIR sensor to detect when someone is passing by. And at that point, you're going to take a photo with the camera and you're going to send it to your email address and also make it available with a web page using a web server. All right, so as you can see, there is a lot to do in the course and there is a lot to learn. And after this, you will be really confident with the Raspberry Pi to start any other project you want. All right, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the course.